And we are live, and I'm so, so happy to be here with Jennifer Potter. Hello. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. Thanks for having um, me. And we wish you the best in San Francisco with your the fires and so forth. Thank Hope you. you're hanging in there. Um, let me introduce Jennifer to all of you, one of my artists. Jennifer M. Potter is an illustrator with a passion for visual storytelling. That's the truth. And cinematic perspective, and we're going to talk about that. She's illustrated picture books for Running Press, <clears throat> Little Bigfoot, Henry Holt books for young readers, and contributed to the Rebel Girls series, which is a really fabulous feminist series for girls. Her work has appeared in the Washington Post, the Star Tribune, Braver and Bravery magazine. Her most recent book, Claude, the true story of a white alligator by Emma Bland Smith, received a starred review from Kirkus, which is as good as it gets. She lives in San Francisco, as I said, with her husband, several attention-starved plants, and a concerning lack of dogs. Welcome. That's really good. And your humor comes through in your work, which is so fantastic. Oh, we have so many people already popping up. So good to see everybody. Type in where you are. We loved in the chat, open the chat below if you're new to this. Um, and I wanna tell you that uh, as always, we're having a giveaway. Do you wanna hold up? Do you have the book to hold up? Yeah, yeah. Oh good, a giveaway at the end. Yes, that beautiful Claude book, beautiful Claude book. We'll see some, some inside spreads from it too. Yes, yes. And we'll have the PDF to look for. And I will say with the giveaway, Jennifer came up with an idea and it's a more challenging one this time. Sorry. More no, no, it's great. <laughs> I think it's really fun. Um, and I think you'll all enjoy it. So that's really pretty wonderful. And then um, our next webinar is seven, September 17th. We're going to skip a few weeks because we're going to have a retreat here not here, virtual this year for the first time. Art directors, if you're watching, contact us if you would like to participate in Speed Dating, where our artists show you their latest work on Zoom, and we're doing it all that way. It's gonna be awesome. So the next uh, webinar, September 17th, Thursday, at 12.30 Eastern time, just like this, and that is with Marenta, my artist Marenta, who's Dutch. Um, Amber Scott says, I have the Claude book on pre-order. Wonderful. That's I love exciting. seeing it from all over the world. So I have a whole bunch of questions for you before we get to your portfolio. But how did you transition from a full-time career, and tell us what that career was, to an illust a full-time illustrator working out of your home? I always tell people I did it the exact wrong way. <laughs> um, I, uh, I was a creative director in the tech industry and the company I was working with um, got bought out, which I got a little bit of money from that. Not a lot. I mean, not like life changing, but enough to reset. Oh, and um, nice so, word. Yeah. So I, uh, I was just kind of tired of doing, like, I felt like I'd run my, um, run the gamut of what I could do for my career. I'd done branding for a, a major company and you know redesign their logo their marketing all, all their stuff their color palette their font like everything and it was exciting when I was doing it but after that I was like what am I going to do that again for another company and I guess I could have but I was I don't know I wanted to do something different so I took some time and uh just started drawing every day and that was exciting for me and then very randomly I a friend of mine joined GTS. Mm -hmm. and I was like, Global What's Talent GTS? Search yeah. that I do with my e-course company. Yeah, so I kind of, I, that's how I learned about Make Art That Sells. And then I got an ad, I think, for the, um, the free mats prep for ICB3. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do this. And, and I did it. And I did like every single one. And I had like, five terrible drawings but I had five drawings at the end of it and because I was still finding fi discovering myself at that point and mm -hmm. I was like I got so much out of this I'm just gonna take this course and I took it and like the rest is history 
she took it and then um i i i was like wow and i'm always looking for talent every agent is not all not always but if somebody great pops up in front of us we take notice um and that's what happened and her work her work is different from a lot of our other artists in that it's much more cinematic we'll be taking a look at that shortly too um let's see um so so your work is very cinematic is that a word people use to describe it or is that just what we do <laughs> i i've heard that and i use it i'm not sure <laughs> okay but um, i think about um one thing that i think about a lot when i'm doing a layout that i don't think a lot of people think about is where is the camera in in the shot oh. like what do i want the viewer to see um and because of that it naturally feels cinematic to me i try and like think of the where whole is the camera, the camera. that's yeah. amazing i have not heard that before where is the camera that's right it's not like somebody's just going to look at the picture but yeah. where is the camera and uh so you think because a lot of your shots are as we said cinematic they're overhead there's their wide angle like you did the corner of the a building and it almost mm -hmm. looked like wide angle distortion like mm -hmm. in a in a good way though right yep, i do that i do that well not a lot but i i definitely do that from time to time yeah I've got that in my book that i'm hopefully it makes the cut but in my roughs for my next book it's in there too next book mm. yeah. mm -hmm. um you studied some animation and comics and storyboarding yeah right? i studied um I studied video and video. um and sequential arts is what they called mm -hmm. it and sequential arts is basically uh comic book illustration and storyboarding and the storyboarding supports the video but um i ended up just really loving it so i was like oh maybe i should be drawing instead of doing video <laughs> so you're you didn't study illustration uh -uh. no you studied that other uh -huh. which is great and that worked for you uh -huh. so here's what i want to know what was your favorite illustration project so far if you can of the ones you can talk about um i like a lot of different ones for different reasons i loved working on claude i loved working on um voices of justice which is out in october I really liked working on the Hong Kong job because I like saying, oh, the Hong Kong job. <laughs> right, right. That is very cool. Do you want to tell us what the Hong Kong job was? Yeah, so I got contacted from an agency in Hong Kong that found my art and wanted me to design characters for a mall in Hong Kong. Um, like they were life-size characters. Some of you have seen it on Instagram if you've looked. And, and in addition to the characters, which you'll see in my uh, PDF that I did for Lilla, there's also um, full like floor or like wall wraps of characters all around the wall. And it is just crazy. It was, <laughs> I had so much going on at that time, but I couldn't not take it. Yeah, it was great. And um, what would your dream job be? What do you, what would you like to manifest? Um, I, I feel like I'm sort of like checking those boxes a lot now. I would love to do a mural at some point, I think, just because I think that would be interesting. But mm -hmm. author illustrator is probably my, my dream. I keep slowly working towards that, but then I keep getting busy and then falling off the wagon, I guess. But Yeah, you're very busy with work. You get a lot of work, which is so terrific. Leah Quinn has a question, by the way. Put all your uh, yeah. questions in the question box. Um, that's where we can see them. Hopefully, we'll try to answer them all. She asks, how do you pr approach your gig work projects now? Similar to any maths assignment, per se, what's different for you now? Mm, I think the thing that's different is scale. It's pretty similar, though. Um, I think when I get a, especially if I'm working on a book, I'll get the manuscript and maybe the manuscript will have the page break up. Maybe it won't. Um, so I'm doing roughs and so just doing roughs for a single, you know, page for a week. I'm doing all of the roughs at once and turn them all in at once. Mm -hmm. and then, yeah. So it's just scale, I think. So scale really means quantity, like there's just yeah. a lot more. Yeah. yeah. A lot Over more. a longer period of time too. Uh -huh. Oh, thank goodness. I couldn't yeah. keep the mat space up. <laughs> yeah you know 
it's funny. Somebody mentioned, why don't you make the, the illustrating children's book class longer, which I'm doing now. Oh. And I think people can only give intensity for five weeks. I just don't think people could sustain it longer. Yeah. Um, and when you have a job with a lot of work, like a book, you do have some spaces in there uh -huh. over the many months when you're yeah. waiting to get here, get the roughs back uh, with the comments and so forth. Um, yes, it is intense. Yes, yes. Okay. Nita Sawe says, have you referred to architectural books because you're, you have that feel in your illustrations? Um. I'd love that this we can side. see your library. I know. I'm like, where is my book? I, okay, here's a good one. Um, I think maybe we want... No, we'll do this one. This book is excellent. Um, how to how, Render. How to Render by Scott Robertson. And I have How to Draw too, And it's not architectural per se, but... Look at that. It's teaching you how to light architecture. It basically, it's teaching you how to light different planes and shapes. Um, it's, wow. it's crazy informative. I, I reference this a lot because sometimes if you're not drawing from life, you have to be like, how does this shadow fall again? And mm -hmm. you can find out. Courtney McClure loves book recommendations. Thank you, she says. Yes, that's, boy, that was gold. That was called. So you do use books. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. I have a lot of references. Yeah, as we see. Um, yeah. How many of you watching are like bookaholics? Yeah. Raise your hand or you can actually. Oh, you can raise your hand. Look at that. Raise your <laughs> hand in the like down there. There's a, a little button or something for raise your hand. 22 participants, 27, 28, 9, 30, 32, 33. <laughs> can you guys see the counter? I can see the counter. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Books are just, you know, I think, of course, we're visual where we love books. We love visual books, obviously. Okay, Raquel Russo says, you said you want to try. You said you want to try being an author. I'm not sure I understand this. Um, Rich, Ra Raquel, can you explain that and uh, write another question and explain what you mean? Because she is an uh, oh I'm sorry you said you want to try being an author illustrator how much have you experimented any tips love your work um, I've experimented a lot um, I don't know I, I guess I've been writing as long as I've been drawing but I it, but words are I don't see words the way I see pictures which is a weird thing to say because obviously um, but words are more opaque to me I think in pictures more, I guess. Mm. So it's, I guess all that is to say, I'm not as confident in it. So I do it a lot um, in my downtime, but I haven't really Writing. pursued it actively. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have to take my write a picture book pitch course. Right, right. You know, I had six of my artists do it and they came out with amazing stuff i've already talked to some of them about it really i yeah. have yeah what and they, they say well they hands down are very proud of what they've created out of it oh it's phenomenal it's great mm -hmm. and we're actually going to we got their finals for most of them those of you cool. watching who didn't send us your finals yet get them to us and we're going to be pitching them we're create car you know crafting a beautiful little pitch to our favorite art director. They also said it was hard. <laughs> it's hard. It, well, it's supposed it's to be over like four or five weeks and they did right. it in a week, but yeah. <laughs> it's great. And that starts in October for those of you go to makeartthatsells.com. It's, it's um, my kid book pitch. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to, what's the name again? Because <laughs> okay, I'm writing a new course, which I can't discuss. And so I'm like totally confused about everything. Brenda Harris says, your beautiful work is perfect to see this week. Since we are working on scenes and spreads for illustrating children's book this week. Oh, yeah. What mm -hmm. advice do you have for current students, especially those that might be overwhelmed asking for a friend? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> what advice do you have about working on scenes and spreads? Well, the first thing you said was think of the camera. Yeah. Camera yeah. angle. Love that. I, th I think that um, in the class, it's very, very intense and it's easily, it's easy to get um, a little defeated if you pay attention to what other people do. And I found that in my first class. So I was like, oh, all these people are doing amazing flat art. I should be doing flat art. And I tried it and I was like, this is not for me. But Wait, what but do you mean by flat art? Oh, like um, just not rendered, just like not um, 3D, yeah, flat, yeah, like rendered. very like, gouache or something. Um, right. And it's beautiful. And those people are doing it really beautiful, um, mm -hmm. beautifully. So I'm thinking, oh, well, that's, that's how you make beautiful art is by using the technique they're using. Um, but that's not going to help you bring your own unique voice to the table so mm -hmm. as I know a lot of you are still discovering yourselves I'm still discovering myself but find out the thing that makes you unique and double down on that like really um, learn to do it better learn to execute what you're trying to execute better and don't worry about the other people I and that's going to that. serve you well I love that I love that that's yeah just double down and just like ignore everything if you can can yeah. we ever but I love that advice. Okay, Courtney McClure, how important is your personal work these days? Do you have time for it? Um, <laughs> not really. Right now, my, my downtime is spent doing, um, I, I joined this thing with uh, the illustrator for our chapter of S SCBWI, which is the Society of Children's Books, Writers and Illustrators, uh, coordinated uh, a thing with a bunch of published and listed authors or artists to draw pictures to give mm -hmm. to um, different bookstores so they can help use these little pieces of original art to drum up business. Maybe they'll hide it in a book or maybe they'll just say, come in and you can buy this. They get to use it however they want. Basically, we're making free art to help push people to local bookstores. So that's what my free time is. So I'm kind of exploring personal art there because it's, it's self-directed, but it's still like, you know, I've got, I've got a commitment I have to keep. And it's, it, it, it's for a, a client, so to speak, or for a, a purpose. Yeah. It's, vol it's, it's volunteer work for nonprofit, if I understand right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's so, not nonprofit. It's just, yeah, it's just volunteer It's just work like people. Yeah. Community. So it's not like, um, it's not like you're just sitting down and, and drawing whatever comes right. to your mind. But I think because you did, maybe you did so much personal work before, it helped you evolve and get to your style. And then from classes, you took, you evolved your style. So I think when you're at your level, and like most of my artists, maybe all, they don't have to do personal work every day. They don't have to. Now, so you see, as I'm speaking, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like cl cl clarifying everything and I'm adjusting because of course I can't speak for all my artists or anybody, but I think for many people, and I know when I was a full-time illustrator, I didn't do personal work that often, but when I did, it was really special and really informed my work and got me to the next level. So um, that's probably the same with you too, but you're probably always thinking Okay, Ekta Chalar has a really interesting question. How much has the COVID affected your work? Um, I am very fortunate in that my life did not change too much. I you know, live in uh, this apartment with my husband and we both work from home because he's free, freelance too. So um, our, my day-to-day -day life did not change. Uh, I think just in general though, it's these are weird times and sometimes it gets to me and I'm, I feel, you know, very roller coastery right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, I, I don't know. I, I've done some art that's very COVID inspired. And then this uh, kid lit art surprise, that's the ha hashtag for um, the thing I'm doing for the bookstores. Um, yeah. That's obviously directly related to COVID. So mm -hmm. I, I'm finding that it influences my personal work. Mm -hmm. um, and it influences my mindset, I suppose, but mm -hmm. it hasn't changed my day to day too much apart from yeah. you know, wearing a mask yeah. everywhere <laughs> and well, not leaving the house ever. <laughs> except for everything else in my whole life, my career is exactly identical. My work 
I've, I've been working from home for, or if I've rented a studio outside, but um, I don't know, since 1984. So um, that hasn't changed, but all the, everything else has mm -hmm. that, that we all experience. So it is a good career for people to work from home and to be able to, and everything we've been doing is the same. Um, we're gonna look at your work in a second, but Rocio Mariposa asks, can you describe your daily routine? Thanks. Um, That's what I would always ask too when I, before I was an illustrator, like, what's your day like? Like, would it, like, no, seriously, like, do you get up and have a cup of coffee or, or do I you- I wake up and play Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do word words with friends or words. I like to, I like to ease into the day. I don't drink coffee. I kind of wish I did. My husband does, and we have a nice espresso cappuccino maker. It's wow. Completely lost decaf? on me though. No, I, it's it's completely lost on me. I just don't like the flavor. So mm -hmm. I I'm not the best morning person. So I ease into the day, and then um, if there's time, usually I'll do admin stuff. Um, Oh. social media or get back to emails that kind of stuff mm -hmm. before lunch and then after lunch is is my dedicated drawing time and because i don't have kids or anything sometimes my dedicated drawing time runs until midnight <laughs> mm -hmm. but i try to make time for myself it really depends on when the deadlines are because mm -hmm. they stack up sometimes that's just the nature of freelance and if you get your artwork done if it flows and you're done in an hour or two or whatever you can be free for the rest of the day mm -hmm. unless you want to work on your next thing. Yeah. Um, when you, do you have a lot of emails? Do you get a lot of emails? Not too bad? No, not too bad. Oh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I have you. <laughs> I know we get all the emails. I know, I know. And we were happy like to- an hour and a half, two hours to compose a single client email. I'm like, you know what? Mm -hmm. This is why I have an agent. I, I just uh, overthink things. Really but when cool. you write to us, your emails, you're always so, always, Jennifer, you're so warm, you're so gracious, so appreciative, and that means so much to us. I'm speaking personally now. Well, but I'm very well, appreciate, well, appreciative we, for you and your entire team. Everybody is so lovely. Thank you. Well, you know, I feel like, too, the illustration community, and I've talked about this before, when I first moved to New York from San Francisco and and I made, I don't know how I met these illustrators, but I met them. They had been maybe in the business a few more years. I was brand new. They would say, oh, you've got to go call this client. She buys a lot of cool illustration. And they would like, just tell me clients and who mm -hmm. to, what to do and who to call. And it was so generous. Mm -hmm. It's still that way, isn't it? I mean, the people are so nice. I think it, I suspect it depends on what your who your community is i find that but i think i'm i attract and i'm attracted to a community that is like that when right. i was a creative director when i managed the team i try to do the same thing like i you know lift if i lift other people up around me i'm going to go up with them i feel that way you know it's it's in my experience it's always been true so anytime i can help a friend i know they're going to help me wow. and um, yeah well, it just feels better too. I mean, mm -hmm. what's the world you want to live in with a bunch of like pissed off people or people who <laughs> right. are, you know, fueling yeah. you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let, what do you want? More questions or look at the portfolio, the PDF? Your call. Jennifer. Oh, me. Oh, I thought you were no, asking. Oh, sorry. Me. No. <laughs> chat so <laughs> i know i should have said that better and, you know we could do either we could always jump into the pdf and um if there are more questions yeah well we do I'll have a we have, we have a, a bunch already okay let's look at the pdf so let us share the screen i'm just gonna stay here for like 30 minutes going like why aren't they answering <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Okay, so here we have this. I'm going to pop the poll up too. Do you guys like the poll? I'm going to pop that up. And I don't know why it makes chat go away when you share screen and then you have to go open up the chat again. So I'm opening the chat because I keep my eye on those wonderful comments. 
you're all so great. Um, somebody already, Kay. Oh, Kay, did, you said you're going to be in the right of uh, my kid book pitch class. Yay, that makes me really happy. Okay, so thank you for answering the poll. Um, it's just really for fun. Uh, one of these days, we'll make some really interesting question in that poll. Maybe you have ideas, Jennifer, because you have such great ideas. I just want to say that Jennifer came, was the person that came up with the idea when the pandemic happened. I um, we did, didn't we do a, a Facebook live for the artists and the agency? Maybe is that how you came up with the idea or? Yeah, we did. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or and yeah, it, it was like a private one. Yeah. A private one. And, yeah. and you came up with the idea of um, the Artivities book where we could, um, where all the artists would make some sort of activity beautifully and then we compile it in a book. And Kim, will you type in or tell us where people can find that Artivities book? Somewhere on the website or something? Kim is in the background. I don't hear you if you're talking. Oh, yes, on the website under the PDF section. Oh, good. Okay, that's where it is now. Everybody, don't go running off now. Stay with us because I'm going to look, we're going to look at this beautiful PDF. Okay, this is fantastic. Done for Instagram. Tell us about it. Uh, I did this for, uh, for Lilla's artist retreat. Um, you asked us for banners and this is the one that I did and it's still one of my favorite pieces. Uh, I'm, I, you know, as a primarily digital artist, I'm always trying to show the artist's hand, which is something that one of the um, publishers, art directors at, uh, at your retreat a previous year had talked about. Uh, so <laughs> I'm always thinking about that. It was uh, the, the person who came from Compendium. And this to me was one of those spaces where it's mm -hmm. digital, but it still shows the artist's hand. And I made a lot of and very the texture, the texture, but also um, I chose to render some things and I chose not to render some things. And it, mm -hmm. I think it feel, it feels intentional, but it fits together really nicely. People say, and yes, your shadows and lighting are incredible. That's by Bloom Bauer. And um, thank you. Great. I, uh, Bloom also says, great idea for the sticker on the suitcase. Yeah, that was so great. Um, also has a dog. <laughs> Kathy Rupp says, Jennifer, the girl looks like you. It does. It's like, well, that was it is a little intentional. Yeah. 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 It's you going to the retreat. That's mm -hmm. pretty wonderful. Um, someone said, the, uh, oh, Riley. Hi, Riley. Said, great example of your where's, where's the camera? Um, oh yeah yeah it's right there it's with the lower mm -hmm. it's lower down looking up at her it's in the street like you really that, that's what i love about your work it's really it's just really thoughtful and the people going by and look how the people going by are pale and muted so we get the scent you feel the noise you hear the noise you feel the motion of them but you it does not take away from the central theme which is go packing up going to oh the bus stop yeah going to the uh retreat how great of course you flew but you know well maybe you took you a just bus like a to, bus to the airport you, yeah it's like it's not it doesn't have to be factual it's just <laughs> vibe of it so that's great okay next uh, oh did i oh no i didn't skip a page this is gorgeous talk about control of color it's the whole book is very sort of soft white soft pale pale greens and the greens of the lizards and then the whitish green of claude well that came about because uh my i, I was starting to look at my portfolio at a, as a whole and because i love light and shadow at that point i a lot of my portfolio was very dark mm -hmm. so i this was something I did as a personal choice, especially because um, he's white, but also still has to fit in, in his environment. If I made everything really dark, he would pop. And that's, that's fine. That could work really well for, for some stories. And it could probably work well for this one. But I wanted something that felt more natural. And uh, 
yeah, I guess part of it's just experimentation. It is really interesting because you're right. All your work is so bold and rich, saturated. And when I f first saw this, I was like, it, yeah, it was, but it makes perfect sense. And it's a softer story. The tone is softer. It's got a poignancy. It's very mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah, it's great. Look at, okay, let's look at camera angle. So the top one is the normal camera, normal, like a per, so people tend to be uh, at like, you know, their eyes are around five feet, right? The middle of your head. So let's say five feet. And we're looking, if we're looking at the ground, we're looking down. So this, the top one is sort of more normal. The middle one is pulled back wide angle but the bottom one is what you do so well not that the i mean the others are beautiful too but i'm just talking about camera angle so this one we are way up looking way down almost directly overhead um and it just it's like i can't imagine a better angle to show this shot of of claude in the zoo um and you can see the people you can see the people taking care of claude well this is partly um problem solving as well because the text in this scene mentions that the the staff of the museum had all gathered around to see to see the um when claude and bonnie were brought mm -hmm. into the museum for the first time and they were on balconies like this because they were um you know, they're, they're not going to be all crowding around the alligators. That's, that's dangerous. You know, they just have the actual handlers down with them. Everybody else was safe on the balcony. So I needed to show the people on the balcony and I needed to show Claude being ex examined. And it was originally something that I showed in two different um, pages. But then I realized if I did it at an angle, either very high or very low, could have worked too. I could do it all in one bold spread. Mm -hmm. And yeah. something about the color, which you don't see here, I, I remembered. Another thing is um, these first two pages are early in the book. And you'll see with the last page, there's a bit more color. I have color very subtly following the story. So at the, at the climax of the story, or, or the, at the darkest time for Claude, the colors are darker. And then by the end of the story, there's more color and it's more, and it's brighter. It's not like mm -hmm. significant, it's still that soft pa mm -hmm. pastel, but it was, that was, um, that speaks to, I think it was maybe, was it Leah who asked the question about how my work has changed? Like I can make mm -hmm. these choices over a whole book in terms of how the palette changes with the story. I noticed that the gutter, the middle of the spread where the middle of the mm -hmm. book would be, is thoughtfully planned. There's nothing. There's oh, yeah. Nothing. I have guides. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what you're doing. Okay. Let's look at the next page. James Baldwin. Incredible. Tell us about this. Uh, so this book is amazing. The, the author, George L. Lyon, is a former poet laureate of Kentucky. She's, mm. she's incredible. She's just a wonderful writer. And this book came to me and I saw that James Baldwin was on the list. And at the time I had seen, um, I had seen, I am not your Negro pretty recently in the theaters and mm -hmm. get out and stuff. This was not, this was maybe the beginning of the black lives matter movement or around a while, a while, like a few years ago. And I was really trying to, I don't know, educate myself. And I learned a lot more about James Baldwin in that time. So when I saw him there, I was like, oh, I have to do this book. I, you know, so I think he was, might have been my for first portrait that I did for it, just because he's so striking and moving and just what an amazing person. People are saying those eyes, wow, I love James Baldwin. This is beautiful. The light, the shirt, my Lord, what can't she do? Wow, Jennifer, striking, <laughs> such an amazing portrait yeah it's you know to capture emotion to get a sense of this man and the pain the sadness the strength all at once in his face you did it the the poem is you know she really honors how i don't know if defiance the right word but he he would not back down you know he is like this is 
this is me, this is my experience and you need to like wake up to it. And so I really wanted to capture that, the mood of the, the poem. Somebody, uh, Laura Friedland writes, stunning and soulful. Will everyone type in the emotional? What do you get? What are you seeing in him? What words come to you? What feelings, what mood, what emotion? I'd love to see, just type in in, in the chat what, uh, what Rach, Raquel Russo says, it makes my heart squeeze. Kathy, powerful strength and calm intelligence strength confidence hope calm strength profound wisdom strength calm had enough no more excuses this is my story listen to me commanding breathtaking and striking confidence and fatigue yeah yeah i feel a connection with the viewer honestly strength confidence and determination and inner knowing yeah so powerful, calm and determined. How cool is that? You know what I'm thinking? I could, um, I can send you a PDF of all the comments afterwards. Oh, cool. I yeah. You really enjoy Jennifer. Yeah, that'd be mm -hmm. really, they're wonderful. Let me be clear. Look in my eyes, says Jay Lyric. Okay, that's beautiful. And it's a beautiful piece. I mean, just like, like from a color standpoint the pinks and the oranges and the purples and magentas oh, great okay next one jane adams tell us about this so jane adams uh was a you know, she was a socialite she was a wealthy woman in chicago and instead of i don't know doing things the normal way with just hoarding her wealth she built this this big institution, this building um, as you see behind her, it's gigantic, mm -hmm. and opened it up for the, the poor of the community to come in, receive food, shelter, education, mm -hmm. and it was, you know, in order to help them get jobs. So on the left side, I don't assume you're yes. the same way, um, they're going in and they're, you know, in need of support. Broken and on the, down. Yeah, and on the, um, on the right, they're coming out, they're standing up taller, they're more confident. They're, brilliant. Yeah. That's a brilliant yeah. device. How fantastic. Yeah, feel free, viewers, to type in um, what you see from this, what, what emotional response you get. Um, again, gorgeous colors, gorgeous rendering, uh, the eyes, strong confidence, strength. Yeah, it's beautiful. The eyes power, wisdom, strength, compassion, great care, confidence. Yeah, I did this, you can too. <laughs> Empathy. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. Yes, okay. very cool. Covered my, the Washington Post magazine. Yeah. My first one, my first editorial job with, uh, with you actually. And I was like, oh, I'm getting a cover for my first editorial job with Lil. I hadn't earned this. We don't mess around. We don't mess around. <laughs> no, I thought an I had editorial to, job. I thought I'd have to start small. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, so they came to me, and the the whole concept was Huga. Um, just uh, the um, as you probably see from the text, they were doing uh, showing different restaurants and bars you could go to to get that cozy, warm feeling. So this one was a fondue bar with a fireplace. And these are all things that were actually listed out. And so I decided to do a contrast because you, you can do cozy, but cozy doesn't feel as cozy unless you show how cold it is outside. Yes. So I had the, the, um, the dog outside of his ear flapping in the, in the wind and, you know, the guy all bundled up to show just how stark the difference was inside and then when really? it came out there was a huge blizzard so it worked out really well <laughs> i mean i'm sorry dc but <laughs> wow well, yeah I, and what you're talking about is a foil contrast opposites opposites to strengthen each side is strengthened the cold which is blue light very little color it's dark which is a foil for inside the warm colors, the bright, the bright light, the smiling, they're laugh she's laughing, they're engaging, she's leaning forward. It's about um, coming together. It's about uh, you know having a conversation, whereas the person on the outside is 
alone, literally, <clears throat> with a cup of coffee, which to me is like, you know, when you're just walking down the street with your, with your cup of coffee, it's, it's very sort of, uh, not lonely, what is it, but it's so low. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be lonely, but it's so low, and then inside is the opposite. And again, yeah. how you control the... Uh, uh, the eye looking at the couple and everything else is is smuted away um fantastic don't forget to put your questions over in q a okay um so how did you come up with the concept someone's um, asking i Leah. did a few different concepts for them uh and basically i was i i think i did like a dozen but then i narrowed it down to three just thumbnails black and white thumbnails and i said here are my concepts which would you like and i was like this one's my favorite which is this the one they went with and they're like yeah i think so too so yeah good 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 and it is good to tell the client which one is your favorite um because thumbnailing is key yeah because they don't always sometimes they all look good it's equal they and and if you tell them what your which one is your favorite and of course never show a rough that you don't love you only can only show what you know you are going to crush it because it's your you know it's your brand it's your portfolio okay next page i love this it's oh, yeah. this is a piece of recent art <laughs> mm -hmm. tell us about this um well if you are in the ICB class illustrating children's books and you know that this is a piece I did uh, for the last week first week first week yeah um, for the text the woman behind the bus about Joanne Robinson and it's super awesome and I chose this because uh, I am working on a book about Betty White and doing a lot of photo research for that getting digging down into the same time period because she started her career in the 50s and may, maybe even, maybe even like 49 or something but about the 50s so I was just in the mode of doing photo research at that time and just learning so like this was very symbiotic so I decided to do that text too and I wanted to do a scene I hadn't done a scene in a, in a while so I did one for this just because um, in the class, you this is the week where you study character, and so a lot of you don't have to do a scene. I just I just did one because I'm a jerk. I want to read you a few <laughs> comments. I love that wet payment effect. I loved that wet payment effect when I saw it on Instagram. It says Amber Ravenscroft. Um, oh, yeah. Martha Stahlberger says this one is so fabulous and cinematic. Again, Riley Wilkinson says. Tell us about your historical research process. This is so of the time. And Riley is a creative director, so he understands about the importance of historical research. Um, a lot of it is, uh, is Google image search, but I get a, a lot, especially historical stuff from Getty, because they just have a photo library like no other, and you can search by the year mm. and find like basically any relevant picture ever and you know since i'm not actually using the picture i don't have to pay for it i can just you know get a bunch of references and yeah and she never copies no never copy copies. A photo you get information and then you do it your own way you just take notes so you can't speak. get away with copying at all i there was a, a scandal recently about some woman who was kind of tracing people and she had a really good she had made a really good career and then it, they found people found out and then you know it was cancel culture you can't you can't risk that so don't do it because it's the photographer's work just like you wouldn't want a, an Ill, illustrator to copy your illustration or draw even to trace or whatever it's just best and you all you know you have creativity everybody you can come up with your own stuff but you can get information. So for example, the kind of lettering, the font of font Frank's hardware, um, you know, maybe it, it, 
uh, just to use that information or how is a pavement reflective and so forth. Mm -hmm. So she was the woman of the Rosa Parks era mm -hmm. who did all kinds of great stuff. Okay, let's look at the next one. Tell us about this. Uh, so in the, in the previous scene, I had done a version of Joanne. I was, I got the inspiration from watching your webinar with Julia, or Julia Christians, who mm -hmm. is amazing and super, like has so much humor in her art. And I was inspired. So I was like, I want to bring more humor into my characters. I'm still at that point where I can render realistically, but I'm trying to pull back from that and find out like what my own, mm -hmm. um, I guess my own style in, in expressing people, the idea of people and the idea of motion rather than the actual, like, you know, specifically realistic faces. So um, I did a, I did a piece for, for the original, I did an original Joanne and I, you know, I was like, this is not enough. So I put the scene aside and just, I was like, I'm just going to draw. I'm just going to do expressions. And I knew that expressions were coming up for week two. I wasn't even thinking this would be week two. I just, I just want to do it. And I felt like I had a breakthrough at this point. Yeah, you did for sure. I'm looking at the middle row, um, the one on the left and center. What's happening in the eyes is extraordinary. It's mm -hmm. really pretty wonderful. They're just, you know, one of the things that my co-teacher Zoe Tucker and I teach in the kid book class is that you don't, when you're doing the expressions for pitch, you don't label um, sad, happy. It needs to say, and, and, and you know, you don't have to know exactly the word like the one on the upper right, is she sad, is she tormented, is she distraught? It's okay, you don't have to know exactly, but you know, you feel emotion in your body when your eye goes around all these faces and, and the range you do is so great. And how her hair kind of works with it too, like the one mm -hmm. in the middle, her hair's kind of popping. Yep, yep. Okay, let's go on. I am nuts about these two, but the one on the bottom, <laughs> Yeah, global talent search. I saw that. I'm like, okay, this is you do something <laughs> really special here. This is the one I was referring to, the wide angle. Um, oh, this piece quality. killed me. <laughs> really? Well, yeah. it was the the global talent search is so high pressure, yeah. and at that point, you know, and I it was me and five other people, all of whom were absolutely amazing. Yeah, and I was just like it's only going to work if she takes us all. It's only going to work if she takes us all. <laughs> if, if what? Oh, and, and did I take her. everyone that time? You did. You did. Thank yeah. goodness. Oh, that's right. Because so I'm like, I, I hate this. I can't, I can't, I can't choose. Mm -hmm. I can't. Everyone is amazing. And I took, what was it? Six. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that was our last, our last one is like, <laughs> yeah. it's just, you know, I mean, it's like when I do the reviews in class, like I know everybody, most everybody has worked really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And, and I don't, I don't want anybody sad. You know, I'm a human being. I'm a mom. Like, I don't want anybody to be sad. And, but you, you can't review 500 images and you can't take on everybody who enters the global talent search. But anyway, this enough of the sob story on my, from my, you know about me. So this piece, first of all, I love your colors, and then I love the detail and information. The bike on the let the guy on the bike, and like I want to be here. I want to be walking around these charming shops and see the people on the upper right balcony and go around that winding path and and go into Mike's bikes. I don't think that. it was intentional, but it's very San Francisco looking. Yeah, it totally I San see Francisco. That now. <laughs> totally San Francisco. Where was I staying when I was in San Francisco filming the creative you bug the course? Creative, yeah, I'm not sure where you were staying. The no, creative bug is, is local. So yeah, you, you might have been in Bernal. And I'm in the mission. So you, I say local. I, yeah, it, what's it, it, yeah. Mission I think it was Bernal Heights, which boy, was way different than when I live in San Francisco is way different mm. now but mm -hmm. um i love this i love i mean it's just gorgeous so there you go and the rest is history and then this one this one you already had 
Yes. They took you on, right? Yes. Um, yeah. After my first ICB class, I heard people talking about Bologna. I'm like, what's Bologna? I'm going to go to Bologna. Mm. <laughs> so I did, um, I did pieces for that. And this is actually my revision. My first ones were still very rough, still trying to figure out who I was. Um, and it's I took them the to angle. Bologna. And I got feedback there from art directors. What did they say? Agents. Oh, they said, a, well. They loved some it. Of them, some of them were like, yeah, some of them were, I love it. Some of them were, you know, this is a little, this is too unfinished. I, I sat down with some people, uh, one woman in particular who said, you know, looked through my whole portfolio and she said, okay, do this on this page, do this on here and this on here, get rid of this. It was so specific. And I, I just wrote everything down. And so when I came back, like I just did it and, and it so much better. Like I still had my lighting and everything, but it was just way more polished after oh. getting that feedback. And it's so rare to get specific feedback. Yeah. Because yeah. art directors, that, you know, that they can't always articulate what it needs. Mm -hmm. So this, I love it. Again, the colors are so beautiful and the cinematic angle mm -hmm. from pulled back and above, looking down, um, seeing the back of the kid on the right with the raccoon tail. <laughs> Red panda. That's what? Red panda. Okay. And the lighting, look at the tree outside is casting a shadow I mean, just technically, I'm like blown away to do that. Um, so great. Did you take photo reference or did you just sort of figure out how to make the tree shadow along? No, I just, I just guessed. Wing, so, yeah. Well, yeah, I've done, I've done enough that it, I can mm -hmm. make it believable for the most part. So it's great. like, you know, nothing adds drama like direct light. Yeah. Long shadows. Right. So great. Okay, next one. These were in your portfolio too, and they these blew, are all part of the same. Yeah, yeah, blew my mind. I mean, I'm just like, you know, cinematic, beautifully rendered, the lighting, great long shadows, um, very 3D ish. Uh, the and and your you know your location scout, your stylist. It's like look where she had look at the zoo on the upper left the gate the beautiful gate that says zoo and and then um on the bottom right those buildings those houses they're beautiful you shouldn't just do any old house or building it's the roof the architecture the the chimneys the giraffe it's poking through paris. the paris <laughs> it's what it's very, very paris a yeah. different colors but yeah very looked paris. a lot of pictures of paris for this Gorgeous. Okay. Next one. Again, you had, this was part of the series too? No. Was in your portfolio when mm -hmm. I, before yep. I took you on. Yeah. So this is, okay. So this, these were in her portfolio before uh, I took her on and you see the level of work, but why do I have to take such a strong, a, an artist with such strong portfolio? Because that's how you get them work. So here you, I mean, just this room, yeah. the child, the coloring, and how you, um, you, so it's almost like the spotlight is on her and then the light fades away from her. Mm -hmm. Kathy Ruff asks, is this all done in Photoshop? How do you this, do your work? This one actually was all done in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. It, I have a lot of different things all over this portfolio, but this particular one was all Photoshop. Do you use Procreate on an iPad too? Absolutely. Like, I'm using Procreate almost exclusively these days. All yeah. the all the stuff I did for Claude is Procreate. It's unbelievable. It's, it's so it's so many people are. It's changed everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can work like outside and 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 on a car in a car, not when you're driving, of right. course. Okay, social distancing in the mission. Beautiful. So um, speaking of coronavirus. Yeah. Yeah, this was me just I guess trying to work through some of my feelings about it. Mm -hmm. Going through the neighborhood 
early on, maybe April, I think, mm -hmm. maybe March or April, and seeing how my community was responding was very um, heartening. Mm -hmm. Seeing people do their visits from a balcony, seeing people lined up. Now, the, the place in the back mm -hmm. is actually, uh, I mean, I took some liberties here, but that is a business on 19th Street between Mission and Valencia mm -hmm. that was a restaurant and in order to adapt became a general store and so oh. we would go there a lot and get flour and eggs and things that you couldn't get normally and we loved having it absolutely it's right around our, our house and it, everybody was so nice and not to break hearts but I found out it's closing actually I think it closed a few days ago because it just could not make it work even oh. even adapting so well could oh, not make God. it work yeah uh, it, why do you think it could it couldn't work well they made a profit the first month when people couldn't get anything but I think supply chains um mm. improved so people could get their stuff oh right those were place. restaurants that were still getting their deliveries from a different supply chain right. so they could sell their supply yep. their, their yeah we got a lot of bulk items from them oh yeah but now yeah you can get your food again mm -hmm. Beautiful. But we still oh. ordered from them every week, so when it was really heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay. Next one. Tell us for the menagerie. Tell us for about the menagerie. this. Yep. Um. I. I think this is this is not long before coronavirus, but this was definitely. I don't know. The world was rough. The world's been rough for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I just wanted to do something about spreading kindness which is pretty obvious here mm -hmm. and even with this I'm like okay I it's metaphorical but should I do balloons because balloons are bad for the environment but I was just like whatever screw it I'm just gonna do it um I don't know let's just play this is a personal piece so great so great okay and it was animated <laughs> mm. there was an animated gift for it oh okay dear speak um, another personal piece. Yeah. I made a bunch of watercolor brushes in Procreate. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this is all Procreate. And That's amazing. The digital watercolor. Yeah. Digital you, watercolor is hard. I think it's hard to get it so that it actually looks like watercolor. Did you but, do watercolor, traditional watercolor beforehand? For this or in general? In life. In yeah. Life, yeah. I did a lot of watercolor actually before I started mm. doing um, ICB, but I was drawing from life. I can paint from life pretty well in watercolor, but I don't, I'm never quite as satisfied when I do art for it, which bums me out because some of my favorite illustrators are watercolor artists. Lynn Gaines, hi Lynn, says you nailed the watercolor look, no worries. It's true. And I, the reason why I asked is because it looks like you you know, when you've worked traditionally, you understand the medium and the look, you know what you're going for. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so effective. Okay, we're going to move along because we also have the giveaway to do. All at right. And this is amazing, 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 amazing. <laughs> this is from was, the first book tail week that I did with um, several people, um, most of which I met in Matt's class, actually. Yeah. And we just uh, decided to do a challenge and, and it kind of blew up. And these are four of the seven pieces I did. That was a really tough week. <laughs> Have clients told you that they gave you work because from this? Mm, I, I think I've specific. seen, I think I might've seen the, actually I'm sure I saw the Little Red Riding Hood one come up in samples from clients before, mm -hmm. that one specifically. Yeah. But the other is just, it's just fun. And so when you do personal work like this, you're going to get work like that. So that's pretty great. Okay. This one I'm crazy about. We use this a lot in promo. Yeah, this um, was, this was surprising because uh, somebody was just like, oh, you should do something for Mermaid. And I was like, Ugh, I don't want to do another challenge. Ugh, I'll just do this. And I just like did it in one day and then it kind of blew up and I'm like, what happened? It's amazing. <laughs> I think it's just the storytelling. I mean, the lighting is there too, but I think it's the storytelling. Is, it's the so storytelling important. is so great. And it's gorgeous. 
Yeah. And it's beautifully crafted. Okay. Next, Deck the Fox. Uh, I have been trying to do a person uh, like a custom holiday card for friends um, and family every year and this is just one I did for 2018. It's great and I, I like it. it and this got me work too. Like this really? helped yeah this one helped me I, this and the um, Little Red Riding Hood was cited for the Hong Kong job. Oh that's great yeah I can see that yeah and, and, so and these gorgeous. as well. Yeah, yeah, these are little stickers I made. Yeah, and that's the style they wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's the style you did for the project. And here it is. Here it is, yep. Woo mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. This is like a once in a lifetime project. Yeah. Just amazing. Yeah. So they took your art and manufactured, made these products, mm -hmm. made these one of a kind, 3D, full size Things yeah. in your work, just amazing. Mm -hmm. Hong Kong, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, and here's more. There were wow. so many pictures of uh, on Instagram of people with them because you could go up and touch them and hug them and stuff. So, and, oh, and some wow. of them got pretty abused by the end of it, but uh, it's yeah. really cute. And it's really, it was really rewarding to see like little kids taking pictures with. with Wouldn't it be great if they if they could send one to you? I, I don't know where I would put it. These things are gigantic. <laughs> yeah, big. Yeah, but I'm looking at like, like the reindeer on the bottom right. Mm -hmm. I could squeeze into a corner. Okay. <laughs> oh, and there, here we are at the end. Yep. Okay, let me stop sharing. Stop sharing is caring. Nope. Okay, so that was unbelievable. We are going to do the giveaway. And here's how the giveaway, you want to hold up? Oh, and hold up any products you want to show anybody. Oh, yeah, I guess um, I have, this is my first book that I did with Lilla, that I got really pretty much right after signing, which was exciting. Um, I think I signed, went to the retreat. Oh, sorry, this is the U.S. version, and this is the U.K. version, and they're both really pretty and have foil stuff. Fully um, illustrated inside. Yeah, I went to the... Uh, the very first, my very first retreat and on the way back, I think right after it, I had a job offer for this book and I was like, oh, yay, and it's animals. <laughs> and see, this is why we love being agents around here. Mm -hmm. It's like, and I've always been this way. I, I always, when I see somebody's talents and gifts and strengths, I'm always like, you know, it'd be great. You could do this and that. And you know, even before as an agent, like you, yeah, you should do this. You'd be so amazing. And so then now that I can do that and actually get people work, it's very, very satisfying. And, and that when I see art, I love, and I'm like, I need to see that as a picture book that needs to be a picture book or that needs to be a home decor product mm -hmm. that need, you know, it's like, it's like an illness, but anyway, <laughs> let's talk about the, um, the giveaway so this is what they're getting yep with yeah. all its show them a few interiors awesome oh let's see what have you not seen no but i know alligator oh, which... I, like, I like this i'm clawed all lonely when he's little <laughs> he's oh, so and little. he would have been not made it in the wild right right exactly so this, this book is is wonderful emma did such an amazing job with the story she um you know, she told a story that is true to life about Claude and his experience coming to the California Academy of Sciences, mm -hmm. but also about being different. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a story, uh, I actually spoke with uh, some uh, woman from the Chronicle, interviewed me and was telling me that she read it to her, her young, um, I think two-year-old granddaughter and was able to use it as an introduction to uh, race and how people treat you different based on your skin color oh. and and it's also about him finding his place and being I can't show everything <laughs> I need to stop um, about uh, him finding his place and and being appreciated for being unique yeah it's yeah. a great story mm -hmm. and a true story yes yeah so great okay so here's how the um, the this works the to win the Claude book. Um, I'm going to say a category 
and you can type in your answer in chat as often as you want, as many different answers and so forth. It might get challenging, so I have a few clues to give along the way. Um, and and so uh, and then Kim in the background. Kim, you want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> Kim uh, is an agent here at the agency. She is go. Oh, look, they're saying hi, Kim. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Everybody loves Kim. <laughs> Everybody loves Kim. Is great. Mm -hmm. um, oh, thank you. Isn't that nice? She is great. <laughs> Um, so Kim will look and see the first answer that she sees. It might not be the first answer, but it's the first she sees. They usually go so quickly that she can't always see the exact first one. So it is what it is. And that's how it goes. Okay. Capiche, everybody got it. Mm -hmm. So the category is an illustrator, a famous illustrator. We'll just start with that. David Roberts, Oliver, oh, look at this. Oh, I love this. I didn't think you all would, oh, somebody got it. Oh, I saw oh, it. Oh, yeah. Edward Gorey, Deborah Steyer. Oh my God. That was quick. I like had all these clues. <laughs> I, you know, I know Deborah. Uh, that's not surprising. Deborah, I met in ICB, ICB3, and she actually lives a block away from me. And huh. I, I'm not surprised she got it. Oh my God. Did so you got like, rigged, I promise. <laughs> but, oh my God. That yeah, I was sure that I was like, well, I'll give the initials, <laughs> black and white line. He's not alive. He's a man. It shows flat. But you gave me some of the clues. But okay. Well <laughs> done, Deborah. That's great. Um, that so you, can, funny. you can email me and I'll organize getting the gorgeous book out to you. My email address is Kim, K-I-M, at lillarogers.com. Thanks, everyone. So fantastic. Wow. I loved all, that was a good one. That was Jennifer's idea to do an illustrator. I thought instead of, you know, chartreuse, but. Um, well, I, I had an um, ul ulterior motive because I wanted to see um, what people said for illustrators because I was like, maybe there's some that I need to check out that I don't know. Yeah. So <laughs> so being Oliver, selfish. <laughs> Oliver Jeffers, Rebecca Green, Gary Kelly, Sendak, Dr. Seuss, Maxwell Parrish, Quentin Blake, Anita Kuntz, Graham Bass, um, Sendak, Beatrix Potter, Axel Scheffler, uh, Lisa Congdon. My I grandmother told me I was related to Beatrix Potter. I she think did? she's probably right because she did all the genealogy stuff, but I always want to put in the caveat that I don't actually know for sure. It's just my Oh, wow. And it's probably you... very distant. That's okay. Yeah. Wow. That's great. Well, um, I think that brings us to the end. That was absolutely wonderful. I learned so much and I just look at your work, Jennifer, it's a real joy. And don't we all need that right now? So good, so good, such an uplift. Thank you for making beautiful art to lift all of us to teach us about cinematic work and camera work and color and, and seeing your beautiful work. It was a, just, I feel like a new woman. Thank oh. you. It was <laughs> Thank wonderful. You. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for participating. We're so glad. We'll see you again September 17th with Marenta, who is a fascinating woman, too. She'll be great to see on Thursday, September 17th at 1230 Eastern. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. We really, really appreciate it. And I love reading your comments on the chat over here, bup, 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 coming in with, like, sneaking a look. So... <laughs> thank you. And Jennifer, you have a wonderful day and, and thank, thank you, you for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Bye, everybody. Bye.